So growing up in Michigan and, and fishing all these clear lakes, you know, I've learned just how effective a square bell can be in the non-traditional type of cover and structure uh, that we have up here. You know, even if it's not hitting the bottom, the action of this bait just is so erratic, they can't help but bite it. For a lot of people, a square bill is, you know, a shallow water, dirty, you know, heavy cover bait or high pressure situations. And it absolutely is awesome for that. It's, you know, it's a great tool to use as a one-two punch with a spinner bait. But what I've learned is it's a lot more versatile than just in dirty water. Got one. A big one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> he ate it too. Nice. Just fishing a shallow grass line right here, and he's got it all the way in there. Good. Nice. Look at there, you can see. I'm throwing a Blue Craw KVD 1.5, but this one's a little bit different than normal. So this is a brand new bait uh, that we just came out with. It's in our hard knock series, so it's got a real loud knocker rattle in it. So I'm fishing this grass line right here, and that's where I really like to have a bait like this that has a lot of sound to pull those fish out of the grass for them to hear it going over their head. and. Uh, that one there, I mean, he just smoked it right there. That's a good one. Sound is so important. And what I found when I started experimenting with different rattle systems and rattles is that the hard knock, that hard knock, especially, you know, I saw it in the sexy dog, that it just really draws the fish. It's a unique sound. It really catches their attention and the, the type of fishing that I do, it's something that I had to have in my arsenal. There's one. <laughs> Little guy. God, he hammered it though. He hammered it. Oop. Change colors a little bit, something a little brighter this morning. Just kind of for him to see it a little bit, and right away it got a, got a bite. I mean, there's, the water's kind of dirty from this wind a little bit, a lot of pollen and stuff, so put a chartreuse perch on. So for up here where these smallmouth are, they love something a little chartreuse, something a little perchy. Got a bite right away, so we'll see if it makes a difference. There's one. I ripped it out of the grass. And <laughs> Not a big one. We'll get them though. You keep grinding. We got to just find the stretch or the area where they're at. But running a square, uh, square bill through grass is one of my favorite things to do. I, I catch a ton of fish with this bait fishing in these clear natural lakes and the big difference, you know, from traditional square bill retrieves is, you know, I'm, I'm reeling it a lot faster. I'm starting, stopping it, and 
snapping it out of the grass like that when you you know when you get it caught in it and it triggers a lot of fish so the action of these kvd 1.5s is really erratic they don't swim in a straight line so the clearer the water the more important it is to add some speed to your presentation so i'm just burning it stopping it a lot you get it down hit that grass snap it out i mean then i really really snap it and uh, just continue that retrieve that triggers a lot of bites there's one <laughs> That's a good one right there. There's a big one. Gosh, he hammered it right close to the boat. Man. Hey, I stopped it. Just great going down this grass line. Come on, he's just got one hook. That's where these composite rods really come in handy right here. I mean, that just allows that fish. I thought he was a lot bigger than that. I mean, he, one thing about these smallmouth, man, is they jam it, but. Oh, these, not a big one. There we go. Nice one though. Got the back hook, the old green gizzard shad. I just was burning along and stopped it, and uh, man, he just he just hammered it. So, speed is definitely important. This is one time you know where you can use a little faster reel for your square bill and, and really get away with it. So, you know, typically I like to have something that it brings in 25 inches per turn, and that's that's what I designed my crank and reel for. Let him go. You know, KVD 1.5 is just one of my all-time favorite baits. I've got one tied on just everywhere I go, any, any time of the year, all around the country. Um, I've learned that they're really, really phenomenal, not just for traditional square bill applications, you know, for throwing at dirty water laydowns or stumps or things like that, but I, I love to fish them in grass, but I like them in clear water too. You know, the erratic action we built into them, just the way they hunt when they run just on a straight retrieve, triggers a lot of fish in clear water. So it's just kind of important to have, you know, real natural colors. You know, I'm, I've got a bluegill pattern. That's one of my favorites. You know, we do a lot of uh, bluegill imitations up here in the, in the Northern Lakes. That blue craw is another one that I just, I really like. Not only uh, does it imitate like a, a light colored crawfish and a lot of these sand bottom northern lakes, but it also looks, you know, pretty, when you're moving it fast, kind of a, a subtle shad pattern. This is an, one that I really like too. This moon juice, this is a brand new color. Um, it's kind of a watermelon with a blue belly and it looks just like the gobies do up here when you're cranking it on the bottom. So, you know, a lot of these natural colors really, really make a difference when you're in clear water. You know, I love a black back chartreuse in dirty water as much as the next guy, and you can't beat a sexy shad just about anywhere. But in this clear water, matching the hatches is really important. I got it. Good one. Nice one. There's something about that sound. Nice. Just got the back hook. Got the old green gizzard shed. 1.5 hard knock. That sound, you know, you think that rattles, and I do like rattles for dirty water, but uh, I, I like them in grass and stuff in the clear water and especially smallmouth. They're super sound oriented. So having a bait that makes that loud knocking so sound really draws them. I've, I've pulled them up out of really deep water with it. Man, it's just a, it's a unique bait that is really, really special. Got it. Good one. Nice one. Just fishing this this grass flat and just kind of burning and stopping it. I mean, that's the biggest thing with these is, 
you just changing speed with a square bill is one of the best ways to, to trigger a lot of strikes. He's got just one hook. I mean, he just reacted to it. In this clear water, it is 100% a reaction bite, but they are definitely drawn by that sound. There's a nice one right there. Look at there. He couldn't stand that. Knock, knock, knock. Beauty. There he is. <laughs> One isolated log out here. And they're going to be hanging around it. Anything different. You can always buzz that square bill. It's just so efficient for covering water. That's why it's such a great bait. It's four wheel drive. You can fish it in thick cover, scattered you know, cover, or just in open nothing. And it just has the action that triggers bass. You know, today we were fishing for smallmouth and it just goes to show you just how critical sound is to them. I mean, smallmouth are really focused on it. I think they chase a lot of crayfish, you know, they hear the snap of their tail as they try to get away and it draws their attention. So I, I saw the first time I ever threw this bait that it was going to be an awesome smallmouth bait. There's one. a little hole out there in this flat, a little deeper depression. Up here in these lakes, that's what you gotta look for, is anything lighter or darker, any little transition, any little edge like that, that's what these fish are gonna, they're gonna be related to, so. He was just right, there's a little bit deeper depression. You can see it good with your polarized glasses now, so. See, there's one right out there too. Just a little darker spot oh gosh there was one piece of wood or something like that that's all it takes to hold a smallmouth so I'm looking for anything isolated but I really like these grass lines and stuff got him good one <laughs> I heard one bust behind me and I don't know what he was eating, eating something. Nice one. Good solid keeper. I mean, even in this bright sun, I can make these fish react to it. So you just have to choose a natural color. This green gizzard's one of my all time favorites for sure. So it just looks like these little uh, emerald shiners and the perch up here get real light colored. And that's what you can do. You can see he's real light colored. You match the bottom with whatever color bait you're fishing. And, and I'm fishing this down real close to the bottom here. It's only about six foot deep. So it's just, it's just, the, it's, it's working for sure. You know, when you're fishing in clear water like this, it is important to have the wind. You know, you want that wind. It cuts down light penetration. These fish are always going to be more active. And for this presentation, it just really helps. Good one, big one, big one. Good one, wow. He pounded it too. Hang on, I gotta go down. <laughs> they just don't give up. Let me put my talons down. There we go. Thanks, baby. Oh, one more. Oh. He's got a face full. That one just ate it right there. Oh, there we go. That's a good one right there. I mean, ate it too, just choked it. That's what you want right there, boys. Just burning it and killing it. You know, I can't say enough 
um, how important it is when you're fishing crankbaits, period. You know, I, I love crankbaits, uh, any, any size, any depth, anything like that. I'm never just reeling it in. If I'm hitting the bottom, I'm letting the bottom make it move erratically. But even then, you want to start it and stop it, speed it up, slow it down. That's what it takes. I mean, in, in clear water like this, it's what, what makes them react. Even in stained water, you got to have those changes of movement to get these fish to react. Today was one of those days that was, was real up and down. You know, we started out in the morning, we had some wind. It's hard up here when you can't see very well. You know, it's hard when you can't see the edges and you can't see some of these isolated clumps. As the day wore on, the sun came up and as the wind picked up, that's when the bite really picked up. No doubt that smallmouth likes sun, but it also helps me as an angler. I can see better with my glasses. I can see the edges and, and some of the targets to throw at some of the weed clumps, the dark spots. That's what it's all about. And, and I think as the day goes on, these fish just get more aggressive for sure. I mean, it sure was the case today. There's a big one. Big one. Golly. There's a big isolated weed clump out there. And he ate it. Again, just kind of burning it and stopping it. Nice one. Ah, look at there. He got it too, just pounded it. You know, when you're throwing uh, crankbaits, I like to use a composite rod. You know, that's why I developed this whole new series for Lou's and my KVD rods. You know, they're, they're built for all the different things from throwing square bills around targets all the way up to, you know, a, a 6XD or even a 10XD. But that composite rod just allows that uh, that bait to deflect off the cover differently and also when these fish get it they get it deeper and while you're fighting them there you're just not giving them any slack line so you just don't lose them that composite rod gives you the best of both worlds you got the the sensitivity of the graphite but the slower reaction time of that glass got him <laughs> that one just got it, man. Man. That is so much fun. That rod just handles them so, so good. You know, when I'm fishing out in the open like this, it's, it's important to use a, a little bit bigger rod. You know, if I'm up by boat docks and lay downs and targets and things like that i want to use a, a rod that i can really be more accurate with so i want a shorter rod you know we've got a six eight and a seven foot that work perfect for that but out here you need to make longer casts and i want a rod with a lot of power so i i've got a seven four medium heavy and you know you're, you can rip it out of the grass i can have a lot of power but more importantly i can make really long casts and that's what it takes to catch them that's a good one right there You know, when I designed the KVD 1.5, I knew that it was gonna be an awesome tool for my fishing, but I never realized just how big of a deal it would be and just how many fish it would catch for me and for that matter, a lot of other people too. So it's just an awesome bait that has incredible action and it's an all season bait. It's something that I use all the time, every you know region of the country, all different types of water clarity. It was a lot more versatile than I ever dreamed it'd be. There he is. Big one. <laughs> That's a good one right there. I mean, I'm just buzzing it across the shallow flat and he just got it. Oh, 
Come on, baby. That's a good one right there, boys. Come on. He caught it face first, too. Oh, man. That right there is why I love a KVD 1.5. I mean, it's just such an efficient bait to cover. You know, if you're gonna fish that shallower depth zone, anything, you know, from two foot all the way up to, you know, even six, seven foot like that, this bait is, uh, is awesome. And now that we have the new hard knock version with that, that loud knocker in it, these smallmouth just love that noise. Uh, it just gives me something. So I, now I'm gonna carry a tackle box of, of the silent models and the new hard knock. Thank <laughs> you.